Great. So good morning. Uh, my name is Stephanie. We're at Brain Training for PD Active, and we are continuing on with the theme this month of rib expansion, thoracic mobility, all of the goodness that happens in our thorax to allow for a more fuller and expansive breath. We talked last week about how um, just focusing on breath, something that you do 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you optimize your breathing mechanics, you can therefore optimize pretty much everything else in your life. Movement, gait, uh, energy, your nervous system states, maybe even the dyskinesia, maybe the tone and the rigidity. So improving your breath state is going to have a very large kind of ripple effect into all these avenues of your body and your life. So uh, again, we're exploring this concept of breath and breathing mechanics. Today, you will need a pillow or a yoga bolster, similar to what we had last week. So you can grab, um, if you are using like throw pillows, you're just going to need like three or four throw pillows so that you can stack them. Or if you have a yoga bolster, that works great. We will also be working on the floor. So make sure you clear out your floor space. I forgot to grab my bolster right from the get go. So go ahead and collect those items and we will get moving as soon as we get those items ready. And if you take a little bit of time to get down onto the ground, go ahead and start making your way down to the floor. Something to note that uh, as you do some of the floor work, it is handy to have these pillows around um, so that you can prop yourself in comfortable positions. So if sitting on the floor right here with the legs out in front kind of makes you slump or it's really hard to sit up right because of the tightness in the backs of your legs, you can prop yourself up on a pillow or a bolster and that just gives you a little bit more space to sit up tall. So we'll go ahead and start here, um, sitting on the floor, legs out straight or roughly straight. And if you need to, again, sit on a bolster, go ahead and do that. And we're just gonna take a little uh, intake of how our body is feeling just on the floor at this moment. Close your eyes if that helps you bring yourself into your body. Take notice of your breath. Where does it come into the body? Through your nose or through your mouth? Try to feel where that air flows. Does it flow through your throat? Likely. Where does it fill? In your chest, in your shoulders, in your stomach, in your back, in your pelvic floor, in your pelvis? Where does that air travel? How does the journey flow through your body? Also taking notice of the quality of your breath and the quality of the tubes that your breath flows through. So if you have any sinus congestion or restrictions in your throat, or you feel a little restricted in the rib cage. Maybe you can't get that breath quite down all the way. And then noticing even your breath cycle. The ratio of time that you spend on an inhalation versus an exhalation. and the amount of time that you feel comfortable having no air in your lungs before you feel like you need to take the next breath. And then on the other side of that, how long do you feel like, how long do you tend to hold the breath before you take your exhale? And all of this without trying to influence it, just what is happening at this moment, bringing your awareness to your breath pattern. There's no right or wrong at this moment. It's just, what is it? Good. 
Then from here, noticing your posture. Again, no right or wrong. Don't try to fix anything. Just notice what it is. How does your pelvis touch the floor? Do you feel yourself sitting on your sit bones, the pointy part, or are you sitting a little bit more rocked back on your tail? Do you have a bias to one sit bone or the other? Travel up through the spine. Do you feel tension in your back? Do you feel lift, lightness, heaviness, compression, decompression? Any adjectives that come to mind? Then coming up to your shoulders. If you were looking at your down at yourself from a bird's eye view, would you see your shoulders rolled forward of your pelvis, back, one forward, one back? Do you feel one shoulder closer to your ear than the other? And then your head, how does your head sit up on top of that spine? Do you feel it heavy forward, back, tilted, rotated? What is your natural state here? Take one more breath in and exhale. Nice. All right. So we've collected a few data points on our starting point, our starting uh, baseline. If you were sitting on a pillow, just cast that off to the side. And we're going to go ahead and lay on your back in a hook lying position, which just is a fancy name for lying on your back, feet flat, knees bent. Hook lying position. And we're going to do some general movement first, and then we'll get a little bit more. Um, uh, ah, yeah, we'll do some general movement first. So, again, everything that we do today either has a direct or indirect influence on your breathing mechanics. I'm not going to explain it all in its entirety every step of the way. Um, so, just enjoy the sequence and we'll see what happens if it influences our breathe, breath on the tail end. So we'll have our arms down by your side. Just let your knees rock from right to left. I usually assign this as kind of a holding pattern when we get down onto the ground. <clears throat> doesn't need to be fast, doesn't need to be slow. Just whatever feels good. It should feel nice on your back and your hips. Go ahead and bring your arms out in a T if you haven't already. And we're going to take your eyes and head to the opposite side that your knees fall. So if the knees fall to the right, we're going to turn our head to the left and look at your left thumb. Knees go over to the other side. I'm going to say to the right, I'm sorry, the left, and you're going to look over at your right thumb. As you switch the knees, switch your head and eyes. And make sure that you lock your focus on your thumb. Lock your focus on your thumb. Yeah. Very good. Two more. Last one. Good. Nice work. Legs are going to go out straight, except one leg. Pull one leg in towards your chest. You can grab on top of your knee or behind your thigh, whichever is more accessible for you. We're gonna pull the knee in towards the chest. If you have the energy, we're gonna draw the chin up and curl ourselves up into a small ball into your knee. So you can pull on your knee to help you lift your chest and then release back down, release your head down, take a moment. Look down at your thigh, curl yourself up into the small ball and then release back down. Again, use your leg. You can pull on it with your upper body to help you curl up. Nice, two more here. 
Good. And last one. Release out. Switch to the other leg. Again, behind your thigh or in front of your shin. Pull in nice and tight. Curl yourself up. And then release down nice and slow. Good. Curl on up and release. You got it. Using your leg as a way to pull yourself up and back down. Now, if you're pulling a lot on your leg, you may also need to push out a little bit to stabilize. Let's go two more. And last one. Beautiful. Same foot, we're gonna replace that left foot down on the ground. So you have one leg straight, one leg bent. Hands out to the side. From here, push off your left leg so that your hips start to roll over to the right and then release your hip back down to the floor. So it's as if your body wants to start rolling over onto your side on the right side. We're gonna to try to keep the upper half on the ground though. So we lift the hip over. My shoulders are still flat on the floor and then roll the hip back down to the mat. Go ahead and work through that a few times. Hip press and throw. Now, bonus points, if you turn your head towards your left thumb as you press your hip, and then your eyes go back to the ceiling as the hip comes down. Eyes and hip press simultaneously, and then return the hip down. Very nice. We'll go three more. Good. Two more. Yep. Last one, please. Beautiful. And release. We're going to bring your other leg up. So switch your feet, please. Press through the foot to start rolling over onto your left side, but we're going to keep that right shoulder down and then return the hip back to the floor. If you can coordinate the head turn and the eyes, let's grab it here. So head turn, eyes rotate and then release. Good. I want you to exhale on the rotation. Inhale on the reset. Exhale, rotate. Inhale, come home. Three more, please. Reach. Yep, find your thumb, lock your gaze on it. One more time, please. Beautiful, nice job. Go ahead and roll yourself all the way over into a fetal position this time. And you can either make a pillow with your bottom arm or actually grab one of your pillows to use underneath your head so you're comfortable. Whenever we're doing floor work, I don't want you be, I don't want you straining. So if you're uncomfortable, let's find a, a way to make you comfortable. Okay. Take your top arm, stretch it all the way forward so that your chest and the front part of your shirt comes down to the ground. So you're almost like looking down at the ground. Circle that arm all the way around over your head. Roll the spine open so that maybe your shoulder comes down to the ground behind you or towards the floor. Sweep the arm down towards your hip. You're gonna have to lift up your head a little bit to make that part happen. And then we bring it back forward and we repeat. All the way back, your head can go on the floor as it sweeps past your hips. So we're gonna lift up your head a little bit and come through. Now, if you want a vestibular challenge, take your thumb and we're gonna follow your thumb with your eyes the entire time or for as long as possible. So here at the bottom, you may see, oh yeah, I need to lift my head up so I can track my thumb the whole time. Good. And if this makes you dizzy, just go a little slower or omit the eye tracking, okay? Just that add on for your vestibular system and your visual system. Last one. Beautiful, nice job. 
before we go to the other side, we're going to do a little bit of that visceral work here. Remember this got a little weird last time. So you roll up your shirt a little bit and we're gonna find with your fingertips, find the bottom part of your rib cage where the ribs kind of, if you trace it from the bottom of your sternum, you can feel the edge of your ribs. So we're gonna press in a little bit with our fingertips and push the stomach tissue and all of its inside contact contents down towards the floor, towards the other side. So you should be working just above your belly button. And we talked about this last week, how you kind of get to a point here where you feel like the tissues have all like collected and you're like, I can't get over the hump. Just kind of scrape over that and then find the pressure again on the other side. There we go here, push off and over the top and around. Yeah, good. Push here, up, over the top, and down. So right here, we're stretching some of the organs in our abdominal cavity, which attach to our spine in our rib cage. They have ligaments that suspend them inside this cavity. I think of it kind of like Spider-Man where there's like, kind of like suspended inside the abdominal cavity. And by stretching them and giving them movement, we can free up the rib cage and the spine for that expansion breath that I was talking about. Good, one more time. This is also really good if you're feeling like you need to mobilize your digestion a little bit, you're feeling bloated. Good. And then we're gonna do one sweep up towards the ceiling. So grab the tissue and pull it up and the other direction. Good? All right, go ahead and press yourself up. And we're gonna sit in some sort of side sit position. So if we could sit with the legs off to the side, some of you may enjoy more of a Z sit. Some of you may enjoy something like this. And we can certainly use this arm to post out to the side. Okay, take your free arm and reach it up towards the ceiling like you have a burning question. We're gonna push through the arm that's on the floor and see if we can lean up and over. So these ribs here expand out like an accordion and these ribs on the underneath side get shorter. So we lift up, good. Take your free hand and we're gonna place it down on the floor. Pull your chest through your hands to lift up into a little extension. This is like this little mermaid moment where she's breaching on the rock, right? Press back a little bit through the hips. Rotate yourself back open into your side stretch. And we're going to go through that a few times. So we're going to come into that twisted extension. Press back and side bend. Good. Twisted extension. Inhale as you lift up. And then exhale as you come into your side bend. We're gonna do that one more time. Twisted extension, hands come down, pull your heart forward. Sit back, rotate through, and release. Let's swing those legs over to the other side. We're gonna do the twisted extension side bending before we do the whole series on the other side, okay? I promise we'll get there, I didn't forget. So you're gonna have one hand propped. If you're already feeling a little cantered, you can have that hand prop. Free arm comes up and over. Push through the ground. Do you see I'm pushing through the ground with my bottom arm and sliding that our shoulder away from my ear to get a little bit more space. Take the free hand down, come into that twisted extension. So both hands are down. Pull yourself through, pull your heart through your hands. Inhale, exhale, come back into that side bend stretch. So you're still leaning into your hand. Come through, extend, lift, and push back and open up. Good, just oscillating between those two positions, but feeling the fluidity in between them. Good. Beautiful, two more. Last one. Very nice. And we'll come all the way down to the ground on this side. 
Make a pillow with your bottom arm or grab a pillow for yourself. And we're gonna start with the pinwheel stretch. I'm gonna do it without the eye tracking first. And then if you wanna add the eye tracking after a few, we can grab that. Stretch this top arm all the way forward so that your chest twists down towards the floor. And if you weren't talking to me, your face would be in the floor. Okay, sweep the arm up and around behind you. See if you can get that back shoulder towards the mat. Oh, sweep it down towards your hips. Maybe lift up your head a little bit so that you can follow through with it. Stretch all the way forward, big motion. Imagine you're holding onto a paintbrush and you're painting the biggest circle that you can through the air. And if it helps create a little bit more re realism in that, you can pick a color for your paintbrush. What color did you pick today? Let's add the eye tracking if that feels right for you, following your thumb or following your paintbrush all the way through the circle. Nice work, big stretch, open, open, open. Last two, and again, if the eye tracking is a little too much, just omit that part. Last one. Good. All right, we're gonna do your little stomach massage here. So you can find the base of your sternum or find the tip of your, however you wanna find the tip of your uh, rib cage and some pressure on the tip of your fingers, push the tissues down towards the floor. Yeah. And again, if you feel that little bump through the center there, I know it just kind of gets a little bit roadblock. Just go over the top of that, find the next spot and then roll through. Okay, one more time. And then grab the tissues from the bottom and pull up just one time. Nice job. And then go ahead and roll onto your back again. And we're gonna come into your hook lying position. So feet flat, knees bent. Good, palms facing up. Go ahead and press your hips up into a nice high bridge. Notice how your feet attach to the floor. Can you feel the triangle in your foot where you have the pinky toe, big toe, and heel? There's a little triangle on each one and all of those points are heavy on the floor. Do you feel the weight in the back of your shoulders? Go ahead and articulate your spine down, starting at the top of the ribs rolling from the upper back down to the mat, but still keeping the hips high. And then the mid back, and then the low back, and then the tip of your pelvis, and then your sacrum or your tail releases out, okay? Press on up again, I don't really care how you get there. Notice the tripod in your feet. Roll your spine down, one vertebrae at a time, starting from the upper back, mid back, low back, and tail. Nicely done. Let's do that two more times. Press the hips up. Upper back, mid back rolls down, low back, top of the pelvis and tail. Very good, last one, press up. Roll down. Okay and release, nice job. Bend your knees in towards your chest and we're gonna rock and roll ourselves. Rock and roll. You can use your legs for a little bit of momentum. Just fun, play with it. You can do two more and then finish in a seated position. 
Lovely. All right. I'm just going to turn to face you. We're going to work a little bit more in this long sitting position. If you find it's uncomfortable on the floor, I encourage you to pop yourself up on a pillow. We're going to go one leg out long and one leg bent in. If you want to be with me, we're going to have the left leg out. If you want, if you like the right left instructions, we'll have this leg out. Now, hopefully we can be in a position here where we don't need to hold ourselves with our hands. So again, if you feel super slumped or you feel you need to hold with your hands, elevate yourself on a little bit of a pillow. This foot here out to the side, we're gonna point the foot and then flex the foot a few times. Point and flex, point and flex. And as you flex the foot, I want you to think about, so flex is toes to the nose or top of the foot to the nose, I should say. I want you to not only bring the top of your foot towards your shin, but reach your heel away. It changes the experience just a little bit there. And then pointing and then reach the heel away. Pointing, reach the heel away. Good, one more time. And then finish with the heel reaching away. So the top of the foot towards your shin. This foot in front of us, if you can position your foot in that dorsiflexion as well, go ahead and grab that. We're gonna try to keep that foot in dorsiflexion the whole time. Slide your hand on the inside of your leg and we're gonna come into that side stretch again. Big inhale into those ribs. Take your free hand here. We're gonna thread it underneath. Cross over to the other side of your leg and then lift yourself into a little bit of extension here. So this is just like mermaid number two, like 2.0. This is what it looks like from the side. I have my hands sort of like this. I'm using them as leverage to help me lift. Okay, I'm putting you into a pretzel, yeah? Good. Slide the hands back out. We're gonna come back into your side stretch and then slide all the way back to your start. So it becomes a flow. We go inhale into the side ribs. Thread underneath, exhale, stretch a little further if you got it. There you go, looking down at your thigh. Open yourself back up towards me in your side stretch and then return back to your seated. Here we go, inhale over the top. Exhale, thread through and stretch. Inhale back open, exhale, reset. Inhale over the top. Exhale, thread through, stretch. Inhale, back to side stretch. Exhale, pull yourself up. One more cycle, here we go. Inhale, thread, exhale. Inhale, open, and bring it on up. Nice job. Let's switch those legs. Okay, let's start first with the dorsiflexion practice on this out leg, the leg that stretched. So again, hopefully you can just have your hands easy. You don't need to support yourself. We're gonna point the foot and flex your foot, point your foot and flex your foot. And when I say flex your foot, you can replace that cue then with push the heel away. Push the heel away. Mm -hmm. Push the heel away. Very nice. Two more. And last one. Hold your dorsiflexion. We're going to come down the inseam of your pants or towards your ankle bone. Side stretch. Inhale. Exhale. Thread. Ugh. Inhale. Open. Exhale. Return. Inhale. Side bend. Exhale, thread, squeeze it all out. Inhale, rotate. And exhale, return. Nice job. Inhale, open. Exhale, thread. Inhale, open. Exhale, return. One more time, flow through it all. Lift through your spine, keep yourself open on this one. Now close off on the rotation. Use your leg as leverage, open yourself back out, and then return all the way up. Nicely done. Let's go ahead and sit cross-legged. We're gonna do a transition into hands and knees over the top of your shins. This requires some hip flexibility. And if you need to use a pillow underneath you, go for it. So you're just gonna roll forward over your shins and then roll back. 
Roll forward over your shins and roll back. So with a pillow, just kind of gives you a little bit of a head start to come over your shins. Whereas if you don't have a pillow, you're you've got to you got to get yourself like up and over the knees, right? Okay, one more time there. And then switch the cross-legged because there's always one side that's more automatic than the other. Switch to the cross-legged, come over the shins and back. Over the shins and back. Yeah, you can push off from behind. Yep, you can do it. No hands, good. Last one, finish in your hands and knees position and then uncross your legs and kind of sort yourself out here. Good, if you can, tuck your toes underneath so that you have the toe pads down as opposed to laces down, stretch out your toes. If that doesn't feel right, you can go laces down, okay? Slinky cat cow. Go ahead and tuck your tail first. So draw the tail underneath you first. Push the ground away through your upper body to round out your shoulders and drop your head down on underneath you. Release the tail out. Extend through the spine. Let your heart drop down. Eyes come up and forward. Let's do that again. Tail tucks. Slink yourself into the flexion. Slink yourself into the extension. Start at the tail always and then undulate through the spine. So instead of just doing full spinal flexion, full spinal extension, kind of just a, a normal cat cow, I want you to try to feel the different segments of your spine coming through this motion. So you have two sections of your spine. If you want to think about it that way, you can think about it in three sections, four sections, seven sections, 24 sections. Yeah. Release. Excellent. Two more. Because it feels so good. Letting your ribs expand. Nice job. Last one. Beautiful. And then find somewhere sort of in between that kind of a neutral. Toes tucked or not, we're going to sit the hips back over your heels, but try to keep your back flat. So it's not like a child's pose restorative. It's a, a loaded beast position, I call. And then we're going to shift forward over your wrists. So in this exercise, I want you to try to keep your sit bones, your butt bones, really wide as you sit back, especially, and then come forward. So really take the effort to let your sit bones widen when you sit back and forward. Now, if you have knee issues, knee replacement, whatever, just do what feels okay for you here, okay? Whatever range of motion works. Good, two more. Last one. Good, nice job. From here, we're gonna take your hands out a little bit further. Take one arm, thread it underneath and drop down so you're peeking through underneath your armpit. See how far down to the floor you can get? Try not to stand on your head. Try to get your arm to come down to the mat and if your head can rest gently, that works. We'll switch sides here. Just to keep yourself moving, go ahead and thread the other side down. And switch one more time each side. And switch. Beautiful, and release. Go ahead and bring yourself up into a half kneeling position, which just means proposal stance like the fancy name for a proposal stance. If you need to hold on to a chair or something for this one, go ahead and get yourself next to a wall or a chair or a 
coffee table. There you go. All right. So we're going to have, let's all everyone have the left foot forward. The left foot forward, which means I'd like the right hand free. So if you are holding on to something, you need to have your left hand on your balance object. Okay. If you prefer to do this standing in a split stance position, you can do that too. We're going to take this arm, reach it up towards the ceiling, push off your support object if you have it, or you can push off of your knee, rotate behind you, swing the arm through. This is very similar to what we did on the floor earlier. So I want you to sweep forward. You can even hinge forward, lift up, press open off of your knee or your wall to rotate behind. Good. Sweep forward, up, and around. Now, bonus points, if you follow your thumb with your hand the whole time, it can get a little dicey in your balance, so just be mindful. Move slow. Feel expressive. Two more circles here. Reach. Inhale as you open. Beautiful last one. Nice job. Switch to the other side. And if that means like turning around so you still have your support device. Yeah. Or just your hand on your knee. So we have right foot forward, left hand open. Yeah. I think if we're following. Here we go. Stretch forward, lift, push off of your knee for leverage. Open up. Good. Sweep, lift. Push off the knee for leverage. You got it. Lift, sweep, push off the knee for leverage. Good job. Following your thumb with your eyes if you're feeling like you want to add in some of the vestibular and visual training that we know from before. Nice. Two more. And last one. Good. All right, bring your knees uh, back underneath you so you're in a double tall kneeling position. Bring your hands to the floor and a little bit off to the side to help you create a little side sit transition. So we're in a low side sit position here. Use your hands on the floor to help you press back up into your high kneel position. We're going to do now the other side. So we'll come down, hips drop down, lift up, come back up. Now, less and less hand support as you get more confident in the movement. Maybe you take one of your hands away, using more your hips and your knees to come up. Maybe you go fully no hands. You can use your arms as a way to counterbalance the lift, reaching away from where your hips are going. And the better you get at this, the less you need that counterbalance. Maybe you can do it with your hands at your chest or closer to your chest. Carrie, let's try that. Ooh, there you go. Nice. And just use your arms as you need. Good. Let's throw it into a flow. You do not have to keep up with me. You don't have to do what I'm doing. I'm just getting creative with my arms, letting it flow through the system. Yeah. One more time here. Beautiful. Nice job. And then go ahead and find a comfortable position on the floor seated. If you would like your pillow, grab it. I like to say life is already stressful. We don't need to make our positions stressful in our body, right? Get yourself comfortable. That way your tone and rigidity can feel like it can flow through you as opposed to tighten back up again. All right. We're gonna do a quick check-in on the breath, and then we're gonna do some of the neck and scalp and face massage techniques to help with our nervous system and breath in that way. So take a moment to 
Inhale and exhale. Again, notice which portal your breath comes into the body. And notice the path that it takes and journeys through the body. Are you filling your spaces in a different way, in a different place? What about the quality of that breath? Does it feel restricted? If so, where does it feel restricted? Or where does it not feel restricted? Because it can be sort of constricted in some ways, but not the others. Go ahead and place your hands right about where you would wear like a strap heart rate monitor. And for ladies, it would be like the base of your bra strap. Go ahead and take an inhale here and try to press out your ribs on your hands. And then exhale and push your ribs in. So we're getting that breath expansion in the rib cage. Inhale, open. Create the space and then exhale. Good. So if you're chest breathing, if you have a tendency to chest breathe, you're gonna focus your breath into your rib cage here. Full exhale, and you can make silly noises with it. I'm okay with it, you're all on mute. Inhale. <sighs> One more time, inhale. And exhale. <sighs> Good. Alrighty, I'm gonna come just a little bit closer to the camera so you can see where I'm working next. We did this a bit last week. So for those of you that came last week, you kind of already maybe remember what we're gonna do. So in terms of our breath, our breath will either come in through our nose or our mouth, yeah? Goes through the throat and then expands through the thorax and the ribs. Especially if you tend to be a chest breather, by mobilizing and massaging the tissues in your neck and your collarbones and even in your face and in your sinuses, in the back of your throat. I said throat already. We can open up these spaces a bit more to let the air flow through better, especially if you have sinus congestion. Like me, I get terrible allergies. So that may help. Um, this may help clear some of that congestion, help you breathe through your nose better. We're gonna work with our fingertips and we're gonna be touching our face first. So if you feel like you need to wash your hands, Go do that real quick and then come back or pause the recording and come back. Uh, but I am gonna get started here. So we're gonna start at the bridge of your nose and just massage out towards your ears and then come back and do that again. Keep repeating that. Make sure that you're sitting in a comfortable position and hopefully your posture is pretty upright and lifted here. If anyone does gua sha on their face or gets facials, some of this sort of may feel the same, kind of that same idea, talking to the nerves of your face. Good, one more time here. Good. We're gonna touch our fingers behind our ears and find, um, this, so like right underneath your earlobe, you have the corner of your jaw. You can place your thumbs there and we'll massage. My voice always changes in this one because that's right where your voice box is. So we're gonna massage right underneath the jawline, kind of hook your thumbs underneath the jawline and pull it forward. And let yourself, ha let yourself have an underbite when that happens. Naturally, it's cause like you're kind of sliding the jaw forward, yeah? And you can go both directions.
Ja. There we go. I'm back. Here we are. <laughs> All right. So um, we're going to go. Let me just make sure that I'm pinned. Cool. All right. So we're going collarbones here where the collarbone touches your sternum. We're just going to take our fingers and move that in a circular direction. If you can go skin on skin, that is best, but no big deal if you can't. What's important is that you tug on the skin. See how when I tug on the skin, it makes an effect almost like all the way up here, if you can see that. So we'll go one direction in circles. Hi, Lana, we're back. And then the other direction in circles. And then go ahead and follow your fingers right over the top. So if your collarbone is here, there's some softer tissue, hopefully softer tissue, right up on top of the collarbone. So we're gonna slide the fingers out as far as you can go and then pull it back. Now this may be tender, so just be gentle with yourself. There's a lot of critical structures in here like nerves and um, blood vessels, so don't, Go super hard on it, just rubbing. And then let's do the other side. A little anatomy as well. I talked a little bit how your, your organs on the inside of your thorax, your torso, they don't just like, they don't just like float next to each other. They're actually suspended by different ligaments. Again, kind of like, um, like a spider web, almost like a spider web kind of like suspends them in space. There is a little bit of mo they call it motility in organs. There is a little bit of motility that happens in the organs. Um, and so in order to have that organ optimally function, you want to make sure that those ligaments are pliable how this pertains to breath, your lungs are an organ. They sort of like hang here and the suspensory ligaments of the lung go from the top of the lung and attach through your neck to the front part of your cervical spine, your neck spine muscles. So by massaging and opening up these areas of your neck, we can, in my world, we call it, we touch the organ. So we can kind of touch the lung and massage the lung by, by massaging its suspensory ligaments, the pleural ligaments in your neck. So make sure you get both sides there. Because if these are really tight, your lungs aren't gonna be able to drop and expand. 
All right, we're gonna do a neck rotation for the last one. We have our fingertips. We're gonna wrap around the uh, other side. Make sure you get all of the tissues underneath your earlobe of the opposite side. Sit up nice and tall, push your head back into your hand slightly. Pull the tissues across to the other side. So you're like scraping with your fingertips. We're gonna look towards your elbow and turn your head towards the elbow as you rotate. and then release and bring your fingertips back. We're gonna do that four times total. So pulling the tissues, looking and rotating towards the elbow. And I want you to get, get a good grip, get that climber's grip on the fingertips. Like hook across. Good. And then go ahead and do the same thing on the other side for four, four or so reps. So grabbing in, sit up nice and tall. Think of like a, trying to push your head up towards the ceiling, looking, twisting, rotating towards the elbow. Good, nice job. You can finish with a little bit of a scalp or head massage, especially if your hair is not put up in a ponytail. You can just brush almost as if you were shampooing. We all know this feels so good when you go to the salon, right? Well, oh, this is the best part. Give yourself a little bit of a massage either with your fingertips or you can grab and pull apart. If your hair still looks good after this, you didn't do it right. Right, David? If your hair still, <laughs> mess up that hair for me. <laughs> good, all righty. Go ahead and do a few shoulder circles here. Hopefully you feel looser. Oh, wow, I feel a lot better in my neck. And then find your nice comfortable position again, if that's on your, cushion or whatever. And go ahead and just breathe as you normally would in and out. And take some data points here. And then now we can compare them to both at the beginning of the session and then kind of our, our midpoint, or it was kind of towards the end, but the halfway point, we'll say. Which portal does your air enter, your nose or your mouth? How does it journey through and where does it fill? The quality of that breath and the tubes that that runs through, restriction, obstruction, resistance, or do you feel free and expansive? And also just take a note of the ratio of the time that you spend inhaling versus the time that you spend exhaling. And then also looking at the time you spent vacated, no air. How long does it seem like you can go with before you have the urge to take the next breath without trying, without trying. And then how long do you feel like you hold your breath before you feel like you need to exhale again, without trying, it's just whatever it is. You can do a little range of motion check as well. Turn your head to the left and to the right. See how your neck feels. Reach your arms up overhead. Lift through your shoulders. With the arms up overhead, we'll go into a rotation. Lift them up again, rotate. Do one more each side, lift and rotate. And lift and rotate. 
Beautiful. Bring it back, close your eyes one last time. Think about the session. You can play back some of your favorite parts. Maybe picking out one exercise or drill or movement or self massage technique. One thing that you want to incorporate into your day for the next week. Commit seven days. And not only thinking of the exercise that you want to commit to, but when, where, next to what will you perform that exercise? It's called habit stacking. When you attach a new habit to something that you already habitually do, you're more likely to do the new habit. Okay, so if you wanna do scalp massage while you brush your teeth or whatever, something that you already do every day. Visualize how you'll put that in your day. Okay, one more breath in and exhale. <sighs> nice job, great work. Thank you for joining me on that. I'm gonna turn off the recording. If you have anything that you wanna share with the group or feedback for me, let me know, okay?